King shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, in thy salvation. How great it shall be rejoice. Song is good, but if a song has lost its softness, wherewith will you see thee? Have salt in yourself and have peace one with another. She brought forth the first son and wrapped him in the first and laid him on the ground because there was no room for her. <laughs> good, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, Harmony has gifts for you in the bag. I meant to put them in that back thing. So if you leave and don't get yours, it'll be your fault, not mine. Then the bag on the front seat, I move them to the back for the service in. Before we before we begin today, um, I put it on the website, but um, you know, those of us I whose phone numbers I have, I send a text message out every Sunday, and um, this Sunday, I said if it wasn't for nobody but me. I included, I included a prayer that I found. And uh, it's fitting for today. So I'm gonna read it. And if you and if it relates to you, y'all pray along with me. It says, God, I am so sorry for the way I complain about my circumstances. Please forgive me for my bad attitude when things don't go my way. I know you have a beautiful plan for my life and have already showered me with more blessings than I can count. God, thank you for all that you are in my life. Bless someone to be a blessing. I love you, Lord. Amen. Um, I saw that. And um, I had to take a minute and say, God, I'm sorry. Because, you know, sometimes when you take on all these tasks, you, you, you don't realize you require just a little bit of work. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, this morning, somehow or another, I managed to get behind First Lady and Pastor because I was driving from my home church because my sister had to um had to preach this morning and um i had already told her i couldn't stay so i was hoping that um because she and my mama were going to the same church mm -hmm. then she was gonna pick up 
But you know, when I retired, part of the reason that I retired was because um, at that point I had lost my dad and I realized mom was getting a little older mm -hmm. and I needed to be there when she was supposed to be there. Right. So when it came time for me to be there, I started complaining about, about why somebody else wasn't doing what I retired for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I ain't trying to be funny, but you know, that was, I, I, I had already told him, I said, y'all do what y'all got to do. I got mom. And so when it comes up, and I had already said this a long time ago, I ain't just say it like two seconds ago, I said this a long time ago. So when it comes up, and it's time for me to do my job, I started complaining. Because somebody else could do what I was doing. But that wasn't their problem. It was not. So I had to apologize to all put people complaining. Because when the Lord puts you in a place where you can do it, sometimes you just got to do what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And Pastor, I got here a little bit before 10 o'clock. And I don't, <laughs> I don't from Martin Day <laughs> to yeah, Warren County. And the sad part about it is, the pastor at my other church, I had to make a pit stop in Warrington. And who the first person I said, but him. I was like, you know what, Lord, you don't need to give me no more reminders <laughs> that I need to be on my job. And I think that's one of the things we forget is that I realize other people can do some stuff. But if it's your assignment, I get that they should know that. I had a conversation with my sister-in-law. Sometimes we overestimate other people's ability to understand the thing. Some people just don't catch on as quickly as we do. And then we sit there and we start getting upset because they in positions where they should know what they do, but they ain't doing it. I hear you, but sometimes because, you know, a lot of people won't hear you when you got a title. You have to help those people who have the title, even though you are the person that has the anointing. If we get caught up in what our title is and forget about what we're supposed to be doing, it becomes a little challenging because we always spend time passing blame complaining about our circumstances instead of doing our job. Okay? So when we come in here with John the Baptist today, and remember, he was assigned this job for me. Yeah. Okay? We have to be reminded it doesn't matter what our circumstances we have to teach everybody to come to that same realization that we have to accept salvation. God, I'm sorry, but I trust you and I'm going to follow you. If we can't acknowledge our weaknesses, then how are we going to teach other people who are? Because remember, there's a part of what this is. Now. When you come to accept Christ, you have to say, I'm sorry for all of those things you've done. Yeah. Just like we talked about the other Sunday, it doesn't mean that you're not going to do some other stuff. But because I'm a Christian, I now know it's wrong. Yeah. And I must apologize. I don't care how embarrassing it is to me. I don't care <laughs> what, what it looks like. I don't care if other people didn't do this thing. Yeah. 
my job as a Christian is not only to admit when I'm wrong, but help others to do the same. Okay, not by judging them, because people have to realize who they are for themselves. Okay. And that's, that's the part I think people try, spend so much time trying to do. They're trying to point out other people's faults. Well, honey, they don't see them. It don't matter how many times you show it to them. You know, because if something's in the middle of my back, I'm not ever going to see it until I come to the realization that it's there. It can be sitting there growing a whole big hole back there and I wouldn't know. In order for me to fix it, I have to acknowledge it. So here we are. Luke 3, 2b, 6, and 15 through 18 is the scripture reading for today. It says, John the Baptist appears on December 18th. All right, we're ready. First thing. Now, Pastor Joe Cam is supposed to be up. I got it. I got it. Oh, I may have done it when I came. I, I, I probably didn't do it when my talk was. Did I mention I've been up since like eight times? Mm -hmm. Read one more for me. Six fifteen and sixteen. And all first man received the salvation of God. And after the people were in their expectation, and all men. Used. Used and now brought the gun, whether he were Christ or not. 16. Mm -hmm. John, I'm saying to them all, I indeed baptize you with the water, but one might my dear. John, I'm saying to I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming and latching or hold you. I am not worthy to lose and shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. 17, 21. Today our task is to do three things. Identify the Old Testament passage that John is quoting because you know we can come in and get labeled to it. Sometimes when we become Christians, there, there, there's a school that teaches that the old dispensation was done away with, but Christ said, I came to fulfill the word. So we have to connect it to what God set out from the beginning to do because we try to proper belief, the whole goal had to change. The goal is still the same, to make sure that his people are restored to the family. 
after that little mistake Adam and Eve made in the garden. Number two, compare and contrast the Gospels that this is spoken from in Luke 3, 15 through 18, Matthew 3, 11 through 12, Mark 1, 7, 8, and John 1, 24 and 28. Um, I think Pastor said it best one time when um, everybody in this room can see the same thing, but we all see it differently. Yeah. And so sometimes the confusion comes in because we don't take time to understand the difference in our perspectives. Mm -hmm. So the same thing looks different to different people. Yeah. I mean, that's why I would this testimony becomes a little sketchy because, um, you know, it's some white folks that can't tell black people apart. Yeah. And it's some black people that can't tell black people apart. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you see what I'm saying? So it, even though everybody was there and they witnessed the same thing for different reasons yeah. and because their target audience is different, the story that they tell differs slightly from other people's stories. It doesn't mean that what they're saying is not true. It just sometimes we have to put a little color on it. Yeah. We, we, we have to understand, um, well, if, if the baby was sinning, the baby only knows what the baby can interpret from the situation. Yeah. The grown people are probably reading a little more into it than what may actually be there. And those people who are looking for a reason to get you, they looking for a specific thing too. Yeah. So just be careful in how we're doing things because we try our best. We're not, I mean, most people, most people, and I'm just gonna say this, most people are not trying to do it. People just, you know, they don't wanna make themselves look bad. Yeah. You, you know, I, I, I'm one of those people, I don't, I don't wanna go out you know, seeming to misrepresent something, but are wrong. I, I, you know, sometimes I leave a little piece out because it made me look bad. Yeah. Like, you know, I didn't tell the part about the fact that she was, you know, you see, I'm gonna hit, hit 80 a couple of times. <laughs> It just, you know, it ain't close for most of the places I'm going to. You know, it's not a lot of time between the two places from the start. But anyway, um, but I, I have a, I have a pet peeve about being late for things. You know, because my mine is I don't like for folks to abuse my time, so I don't like to do the same. So you know, it's a couple of shortcuts I had to take <laughs> that I don't necessarily mention when I tell you parts of my story, okay? Then we should be able to articulate whether he or she should or should not seek to have a personal wilderness experience. Oh, Jesus. Tell me, how did you feel when you come out the wilderness? Uh, uh, Pastor, if you could, could you tell us a little bit, according to how this text writes, what a, what a wilderness experience may look like? For a season, the writer says he worked as a minister in the church located in the Navajo Nation in Arizona. He learned living in a new location gave him a new opportunity to deepen his relationship with God. Internship became a wilderness experience, both physical, physically, and spiritually. As he served the congregation, he better understood his personal limitations regarding his vision. Lord have mercy, Lord. Never thank you for another life. Never thank you for your life. Because you live in a wicked, because you got in this position. Bring all that in the bag of chips. A lot because we know in terms of the ministry. 
It takes a lot of work. You got to say you have to really all as much in order to write the Bible. I tell you all the time, you know, I got to get up. Sometimes you have to get up early in the morning. You got to say it. Behind you. So, oh, I got up. Right, it goes on. 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 Um, part of the reason why I'm you know, asking it should be detailed is because it kind of shows that wilderness experiences are not necessarily what we think of in terms of how you see it scripturally in John. It's simply putting you in a place that's outside of your comfort. Okay. For the Navajo, that's not a wilderness. They do every day. Yeah. But um, the, the test of true Christianity is if you can talk God, even with people who could possibly reject your words. Okay. Now, most of us are living in, in, in working in a place that's familiar. But then sometimes the Lord will give you an opportunity that's in a space where you know no one. And so sometimes you're reluctant to, to move to that new space because you're with people you're not comfortable with. They got procedures that you're not familiar with. But you're good at what you do. And you know you can do the job that they say they want. Yeah. As we look with John, we know based on the past two lessons, John has been prepared from birth to do his job. Yeah. He was born to do his job. It was he was ordained to do that job before he was even born. Yeah. So there's no question about his skills. 
He just has to develop the confidence and the ability to share his skill set with people who may not want to hear what he has to say. Yeah. I, I don't know if, any, if I'm touching anybody. <laughs> But, yeah. I, but I'm just saying what I'm saying. Yeah. When we come down and we read the lesson context in the second paragraph, <clears throat> it says, John came as the last prophet of Israel. As such, his task was to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the land. Now this is in Luke. Now it's three parts. Okay, the first thing talked about the fathers being the head of the household. But notice how they said to do that. I need for your fathers to look to your children. That means everybody who's the head of a household has to prepare for a future that does not include them. Because yeah. we're not going to be all the time. And if we don't make the people who come behind us ready yeah. to carry the mantle, then everything that we knew dies. Yeah. So, you know, when, when you're being asked to go into some of these different situations, remember, if you're the only person who knows what you know and you never share it, yeah. how many people have let somebody get away from you? And it's somebody's recipe, somebody's uh, way of sewing, some skill that they had that left you with them because for whatever reason, they never told you their secret ingredient. If we don't learn to share what God has put in with people, whatever blessing God blessed us with, it goes when we leave. Sometimes we have to remember that. I'm trying to be a little selfish with certain things. Um, I'm not always going to be. And, and I, I, let's put it this way. If the Lord blessed you with it, he can bless you with something else. So if you give it away, all you're doing is making room for new stuff. So why are you nervous and scared and upset that somebody's going to take your place just because you shared a little bit of knowledge? Maybe that's going to happen. You know, I don't, I don't think we all understand it. That's going to happen anyway. So do you want it done right? Or do you want them to just make up what they're going to do? This question. I'm just asking. The next part of that, it says, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. There are a lot of people that, that uh, have been pointing out to me for these last couple of years. I was going to say months, but it's been years. The common sense ain't common. Amen. <laughs> There are a lot of people that were not a tr that were not trained to honor God, and as a result, some of the little just commonplace things that are a part of Scripture, because a lot of people don't know, especially in our culture, how intertwined our ethics and morals are with the with Scripture. You know, you thinking it's stuff you made up. No, it was, it was Jesus' rules. You know, we just we just modified them you know, to make them work for us. But when we miss having the little kids go to Sunday school, you know, to learn God so loved the world, you know, thou shall not. When, when, when they miss these pieces, they don't have that information with them to share and use in daily life. So they end up becoming disobedient to the word and the will 
God and they can't figure out why things are going so bad. Hey, Brother Thurman. Hey, Kay. Hello. So it becomes a bit of a challenge for, um, for us to be able to even coexist. Because it seems like everybody's doing stupid stuff. You know, you sitting there driving down the road, and you know, again, I'm already breaking the speed limit. But dude, why is you weaving between two lanes? You don't see that big transfer truck about to kill all of us. Yeah. There was a whole group of people who, during the pandemic, because of how the uh, business was set up, they got their driver's license online, and they driving with us. Now, it was for convenience, it was for expedience, but you would think that at some point they would make sure they took the time to go back and get the stuff they missed. Yeah. No, they already got there what they were going to get. Yeah. So until such time, as someone comes in and pulls you to the side and says, baby, there's a better way, there's a right way yeah. to do what you're doing. Because they already got what the goal was. They just gonna keep doing what they were doing because it was the easiest way to do it. Not because it was right, but because no one ever checked. You know how sometimes you look at somebody's child showing out in the store and you say, God, I'm glad it's not my child. Yeah. I mean, how, 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 how many times you've done that? But then, you know, because I'm in, I used to be in the school. You know those children? They, they interact with other children and um, they end up growing up in the middle of the street. And I didn't check them when they was in the store. Their parents obviously didn't check them. Yeah. We come to class and that same child doing the same crazy stuff because no one has ever stopped and showed me what the right way is. Because they felt and they experienced that it wasn't their problem. And I said, you always have to pray without salary. Sometimes when Jesus tells you to do a thing, even though it's inconvenient, if God led you to do it, there's a reason why he led you to do it. Remember, we come into John the Baptist who's been trained to do some stuff from his birth. See, some of the stuff that you have in you, you've been trained to do. There's a reason why the Lord is speaking to you and not the person behind you. Okay? If you don't do your assignment, then how many people are going to be affected by that crazy child showing up in the middle of the street? Because I've seen it real. A child that I know I could have calmed down didn't calm down. And when I say they tore the whole hallway up, because I just didn't feel like dealing with it that day. But I end up having to sit in meetings for three weeks behind that one child I couldn't just stop. Second thing, the disobedient have to be shown the wisdom of the just. Then the final thing that is is to make people make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now, I love to sing a song, I pray for the law be ready. But there's some effort that has to be made to get a person ready to be in the presence of God. You know, I know all of us say we want to go to heaven when we die. I'm not in a hurry. Because yeah. I know I got a few things to work on. <laughs> and I'm a whole lot further in knowledge of Christ and some of the other people that I see. So I have to prepare, not just me, but those people around me for the presence of God, because if I'm easily swayed and, and, and I got people who are not quite ready to be where Jesus is, then it will take me off my path. So I have to constantly convince folks, look, dude, this is selfish on my part. <laughs> this is selfish on my part because I want to go see Jesus. I don't need anybody around me 
that's not ready. So if you don't mind, could maybe we make a few adjustments? Because for whatever reason the Lord assigned me, you have to be in my circle. Um, but I, I can't I can't stand the way it aggravates me. You know, I don't need to know about how many other people you sleeping with. That 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 that's too much on my spirit. You know, I can't drink it so much, so I really don't like folks doing, you know, that much. I, you know, I, I need to change what my circle looks like. Okay, I'm not stopping you from doing you. I'm just saying that if you're preparing for a different What was that? What when we were when we were younger, they used to be. Now they let them go in the class. You know how it used to be a way you talked with your friends, but when you came to school or church, you talked a little different. Mm -hmm. There are people who don't know how to do that, so they act like they act in the street all the time. So they never learn how to talk properly around a certain group. There will come a time when your only conversation will be the proper conversation. That that little side cussing and whatever, you'll stop doing it because you'll find out once you learn the right way, it's more effective. You were doing the other way because it's convenient. So when I'm preparing a people, they will learn that if they're following the right way at some point. All of this behind me. Yeah. Three things. One, prepare for the future. Two, make wrong rights. And number three, get ready for the yeah. That's John's task. As we're going through and we're looking through his formative years and um, some people talk about John's wilderness experience as being with, uh, and we're in paragraph three now, a Jewish sect known as the Essenes. They were a little different from the Sadducees and the Pharisees, um, and not really mentioned. They just call them extra folks because they weren't considered to be, you know, uh, mainstream Christian, well, Jewish people, because uh, remember, at this point, Christ hasn't entered, so we're still dealing with the Jewish faith. Christ isn't there yet, so they're waiting for their salvation. But, you know, we still had church folks, and it's a certain group of church folks that people expected a man raised in the church to interact with. But that's not who Luke said. John went to. He went to the folks who had no idea of what God could do. Now, it was some similarities in how people did that. Um, let's, 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 let's do this in this way. Um, has, has anyone ever been to a white, a white Southern Baptist church? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, um, they use the hymn. Same Baptist hymn. They do communion like we do. But somehow the service just don't seem quite the same. Why is that? Okay. It, it, just, it just don't seem quite the same. Um, the, the bones look it, it looked like it should be the same, but you feel a little, you know, I mean, it's, it's not even that you're uncomfortable. It's like, okay, maybe I need to change my tactics because they don't seem to act like people I'm used to. But if you've ever had the opportunity to speak or to sing, you'll realize that they appreciate the exact same thing that was offered in the other church. They just not ever been exposed. John, when he's entering, he's coming to normalize how God looks to everybody. 
one loaf, one faith, one baptism. I know for personal convenience, we have all of these different uh, denominations yeah. and, and places of worship. But John's role was to teach one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So if John could preach the same way to people he'd never met versus how he would preach to people that he would meet, it means that God's word never changes. It's the same for you. It's the same for you. It's the same for you. And it's the same for you. I get that your lives may be different, but God is there for everybody. Yeah. Are we together so far? Because we gotta we, we before before we get into what John did, there's some there's some preparation. You know, you know how people like to jump out and they want to do stuff just yeah. because they weren't supposed to be done. No, John, John did a lot of stuff. And remember, he's only six months older than Jesus. John is doing all his work. For a man that we see really on the scene at two periods in his life, well, three. One when he was born, the second time when he was 12 years old, and then it starts when he's about in his 30s. But John is out there working his behind off yeah. in between because, again, I need for you to be able to recognize Jesus when you see him. And no, it ain't me. Because it's not about me. It's about the one that's behind me. So if you believe me, and if you think my word is right, imagine how much bigger and better the one is that's coming behind me. You know, we looking for, you know, that quintessential uh, introduction. You know, that person that can bring you out on the stage. We talking about James Brown style. That's what John's role is. Okay. To make sure that at some point it doesn't matter who you are, yeah. where you come from, you know who Jesus is, what Jesus is, and what his role is. Because remember, the Old Testament said that there is a Messiah coming, Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords. Yeah. I need for you to know what he looks like and to be able to differentiate him from all the other people who are going to say it. Because it's going to be a bunch of people who claim yeah. the throne, but they ain't ready for it. I need for you to know the difference between the genius who's going to put on a Superman outfit and sell fake trading cards on, online <laughs> versus the one that we voted in the office, yeah. okay, that is able to, 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 to pass bills that create jobs and health care. You know, I, I need for you to tell the difference between fake and real. When John's birth is described in Luke, and now to paragraph four, they pause to tell the birth of Jesus. And he does so by setting the context of John's public ministry in the political and religious context. Because again, I want you to see what John had to deal with as he's out preparing the world for Jesus. So when, when you go through, when you go through John and Luke, he starts out by telling where he speaks, then he goes to, to tell you the people that he has to deal with. And then we come up at the end to do a time frame. that's in the last paragraph, for events recorded in his gospel. And the inclusion of these rulers remind people that the Jewish people of the time lived under other people's guidance. So they had extra people talking in their head. Even though they had been raised to do a thing, even though they know who it was, it's other people who were trying to whisper something different than what they knew was supposed to be coming. So when John comes back to his, his people that he's supposed to be talking to, the wilderness experience had helped him to understand what it's like to look at things from a different perspective, but still show them what Jesus looks like, because that's what John had to learn how to do. And I'm saying this because 
sometimes it's going to be a bit of a challenge for us when have, have you heard children speak I'm not even sure if they speak in complete sentences anymore. Um, the slang I'm not familiar with. Um, I don't know who the newest pop stars are, but I still have to share information with them. If the information is still relevant, then I should be able to find a way to communicate to people that I'm not familiar with the information that they need to have. Is, is everybody with me so far? Because I, you know, so, sometimes we get, we box ourselves in the corner and saying that we have to change the people. But the people are who they are. The word doesn't change. So I have to be able to adapt how I share the word with people who are who they are. Does that make sense, Patty? So here we go into the actual scripture. We start off in 2B, where it says, The word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. While I'm in a place that I'm not familiar with, Jesus, Jesus made things. So if I'm in a space that's unfamiliar to me, and this is where Jesus comes to me, do I leave that space and go back home? Or do I stand right there where Jesus blessed me and do what he told me? Right. When God talks to me and where he talks, There has to be a reason for Because he could have said what he was saying to you. He could have said it to you 20 years ago, but he didn't. He could have said it to you when you were still staying in Atlanta, but he didn't. He waited till right here, right now, at this time, to give you that word. So it's what he's telling you to do. Is the task that he's telling you to complete. Is it for somebody that you remember, or is it for you to use? with the people that you're in. I have to go back to that charge to serve this present age. And if you're in a space right now, and that's when God gave it to you, you might want to look around and see what resources that you have there to do what God told you there. Because there's a reason he didn't tell you when you were over there. He waited till you got here. Number three, and it says, and he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. So what John decided was, okay, since we're here, as Pastor Evans used to say, why not? <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> you know, the Lord gave it to me. I have nothing to lose. I might as well go forth and do what God told me to do. And what he told me to do is to preach the baptism of repentance. Um, I, I know we like to emphasize the water part, but that's not what he says. He says repentance. That means you teach people to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I know I was wrong. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I'm acknowledging that. This is a symbol of that acknowledgement. But first here, God, I'm not perfect. <laughs> and I'm asking for you to forgive my sin. Yeah. Because I know that as long as I keep these things, yeah. then I can't be in your presence. All right. Lord, please help me. Now, does that mean I'm not going to sin anymore? Is that what you're saying to me? He's saying, Lord, I am talking to you and asking you to help me do so. Yeah. So when I have the tendency to do something I shouldn't, Father, please help me. I'm asking for your help. All right. I acknowledge that I need help. 
And so I'm saying, Jesus, I want you to be my help. Help me to repress myself. That's what John starts to teach. All right. Right there where he was. He doesn't turn around and go anywhere. He does it right where he was. Yeah. I know some of those people don't look like in your mind that uh, they are ready for it. But that's the first thing you need to ask God for forgiveness for. Because you're trying to determine who can go to heaven and who can't. <laughs> 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 God says I offer this to everyone yeah. and if I don't use the vessels if the vessels won't, won't share then how am I going to get it to everybody they don't see me even though I'm right there in the streets with them they don't see me but they see you I need for you to help them to see me so that they know they're not by themselves when they in the club on the street corner under yeah. the bridge or where they are because they can't see Jesus right now because yeah. they haven't done their part. If you don't help people do that, how are they going to get the peace that you have? And again, I didn't ask you to do it with people you already do. I asked you to do it right where I told you. Yeah. When we turn to page 140, um, I just need to reemphasize this point. It says the practice of water baptism to indicate spiritual cleansing did not originate with John. The prophet Ezekiel described how water would metaphorically cleanse God's people from their moral impurities and would show the presence of God's spirit. Yeah. Further, the immersion of a person into the water served as a way for non-Jews to signify their conversion to Judaism. So John is not introducing something that he's unfamiliar with or what the community is unfamiliar with. He's using techniques that people have already become accustomed to see to help them to see God. The emphasis is not, is not on the techniques now, but I, that was the strategy that I had to use for people who don't already know how to see God. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. sometimes we, we put emphasis on the strategy and, and, and yeah. de-emphasize the message. Yeah. Communion is a strategy. It's a symbol. It's, it's a way to memorialize the, 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 the death of Christ. It's to remind you of that. But trust, know, and believe, taking communion don't mean that you know Jesus. It is literally a way to connect it with people so that you have some type of mnemonic device to remember the lesson that God is trying to give to you. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, when we go to verse four, it says, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah's prophet saying, the voice of one cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his paths straight. Y'all, I, I know we like to go into weave through some back alleys. But it really is one way for us. We confess with our mouth. We ask forgiveness for our sins. We acknowledge that Christ died and rose again for our sins. And we are saved. We don't have to flip over no pews. We don't have to turn over our firstborn child. We don't have to leave our W 2 statements off with the church clerk so they know how much we're supposed to tithe. Uh, <laughs> it's a simple, straight path. Yeah. We have to be able to separate all of the traditions and the mnemonic devices that have been used yeah. from what the true pathway is confession, 
repentance, except. Number five, every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough shall be made smooth. When I come in, I'm going to fill in all those gaps. Yeah. Jesus is going to do it. His word is going to do it. He's going to take care of those people who seem to not be in the best frame of mind they in the pits of despair, but he also going to knock the folks down off their houses. Yeah. Okay, those people that want to, you know, weave and dabble in and out of Jesus every now and then. They want to love Jesus on Sunday, but they don't want to love him on Tuesday. Yeah. Once a person is introduced to who Christ is, you'll find some of that stuff starts to wane away. Those people who are always upset and depressed, you know, they'll be still smiling a little more. Yeah. Them people who thought they were a little bit better than you, you'll find them saying, well, how are you doing today? And you sit there yeah. turn your head like, did you speak to me? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. Yeah, you you know, them people who would spend a little extra time in the club on Saturday night, yeah. um, you know, they'll leave when you leave now. Yeah. <laughs> that, it is what it is. <laughs> The, 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 the problem is sometimes we think that change is going to be fast. It's a process. You know, I grew up with Jesus all my life. You know, some people say, you know, I wasn't saved all my life. I, and I, I can't really say that out loud because I promise you, um, whether I thought I knew Jesus or not, there wasn't a day that I can remember ever from childhood where Jesus was not the focus of what my family did. He was a part of who my culture was. Yeah. So some of these people who come to Jesus a little late, I'm trying to figure out, well, why, why didn't you have to do this? But I didn't realize that the Lord had simply blessed my family to be a part of, just like with John, to be a part of who Jesus was from, from birth to kind of filter out some of those outside things so that I had a kind of a leg up you know, I knew it was a Jesus to come back to when I did something different, which is why the punishment hit me hard. Because I knew that, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't have the disadvantage of not knowing that Jesus was my Lord and Savior when I'm out there doing something I ain't had no business with. I knew that. So when I got in trouble, yeah, I deserve, I, I will. Yeah, I did. It was, I was, <laughs> all I could do is say I'm sorry yeah. because I knew I was wrong when I did it, what God will do is he will get you to a point where you're not going to think that because I've been in church long or I just got to church yesterday that I'm any better than you are. You're not better than me. I'm not better than you. We all are the same. Uh, sometimes what happens is, you know, we, we think seniority gives us priority. Look, everybody has a talent. Yeah. I don't care if you've been here 40 years. Yeah. If you can't play the piano, don't sit down. <laughs> that, that's not what you do. Okay? At the same time, though, I don't need everybody ushering at that door either. Some of you all don't have congenial spirits. And I need somebody to make a person glad to be in the house of the Lord, Amen. not repelling them when they walk in. So, you know, you think that because a job seems simple, it's hard to stand there at that door right there and keep some of them demonic spirits out while ushering in people. <laughs> That's not an easy challenge because I've seen some of them sisters on them days that they spent four hours in the house of God so they can look good for church anniversary Sunday right. who want to sit on the front row and somebody already took their seat. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody can't do that. So I get that you may want to do a thing, but you need to do what God assigned you. So that doesn't make this position at the door any better than pastor's position because he's standing in front of the pulpit. Because pastor can't preach to a bunch of demons 
the same way that he can to a bunch of Christians. Notice I didn't say leave people out there. I said you got to keep the community in the right place. Um, number six, and of all flesh, A L L, all flesh yeah. shall see the salvation of God. Normally, in, 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 in when they write the Bible, they talk about girls, boys, male, female. It said just in case y'all had any idea. If, if it's living. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care if you your pronoun is he, she, or this. Flesh. Everybody's going to know the salvation of God. Yeah. That's your job. Everybody has access. Not some people. Not one person more than another. Everybody gets to have access to the salvation of God. We as people don't get Fifteen, and as the people were in expectation, whether you believe it or not, when when people see that you are different than the average person, they're expecting something from you. So when I say I represent Christ, they're looking for something magic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting there like, but I'm just like everybody else. What you think I'm going to do that you didn't do? I woke up and I put my shoe on one foot after the other, just like you did. And honestly, man, it took me a little longer than you did this morning. I mean, I understand why you expected me to do something different. Whether people acknowledge God or not, they can see him. They know what he, they, when I say they can see him, I can tell a Christian from a non-Christian. Sometimes I only have to look in their mouth. There's just aura that emanates from a person that has that gorgeous baby seed all the time. You know, because sometimes you're like, well, how come this baby won't come here? Because the baby can feel that you got some stuff going on. And I don't mean that you're not a Christian. I mean, that day you may just have some issues and you look into the baby to calm you down. The baby's like, I don't want to be part of that. And they scream and holler. Then they go to the next person and all of a sudden, And this baby can't even articulate, but they see it. That's what other people see as well. They see that on you. And so the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John because I can see. Yeah. 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 So are you the Christ? Is it you? Because I know you got something special. So. So am I supposed to follow you? Because I'm excited now. You got something going on and I want what you have. And John had to push pause. There's going to come a point when you realize as a Christian, you have some abilities that you never tapped into. And people will start coming to you and asking you, uh, sister, I need you to pray for me. No, could you help me with this? Because I know if you do, it's going to happen. Can you go help me talk to such and such? Because they don't listen to me, but they'll listen to you. I know we'll again. There, there may be the tendency that um once you start to display those abilities, that you somehow are better than everybody else. No, it's not you. It's the God that's in you. Okay. I get that you can do some stuff that the average person doesn't seem to be able to, but you have a God. And an anointing that the average person doesn't have. Once they learn who God is and how God can work in them, they will be able to tap on those sources inside of them and realize they don't need you. They need you. Okay. So when we go to 16a, John has to answer and say unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I come, whose latchet or whose buckles or whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. Yeah, yeah. So I get what you're saying, me, and I appreciate you for it. Yeah. But I need for you to know 
the person that I'm representing, yeah. I, I can't, I, I can't, I, it's hard for me to even express how awesome, uh, how wondrous, uh, how wonderful yeah. this particular God is. And I'm sorry, even though I was blessed from birth, he was God. So I'm going to do you a favor. This is what he does in 16 D. I'm not just going to bless you to your Lord as a symbol of me. I'm going to introduce you to the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Ghost. Now, when um, we do the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost descends and he leads us as a company. This verse reminds us. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> no one. Y'all getting the same sound? The Lord allowed John to introduce a portion of who he is to non-believers who John was trying to convince to stay. Number 17, it says, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. God is simply saying, I'm inviting you in. But um, please don't please don't take this invitation lightly. Mm. <laughs> uh, now remember, I told you the man whose house I'm inviting into, inviting you into, is bigger than all of y'all. Okay. Um, you can come in his house half stepping if you want to, but he knows the difference yeah. between the pretenders and the contenders. He knows the difference between those people who are accepting his word or they're simply trying to blend in with everybody else. You can fool the people, but you can't fool him. So please know, I'm going to invite you. Come on. But don't get in front of Jesus pretending like um, he doesn't know what your heart looks like. Yeah. So you can tell me all day. You can give me lip service about all the stuff that you've been doing. But God knows that. Yeah. So I, I just want everybody to pause for a minute in terms of how many people are giving lip service mm. and how many people are serving God? Yeah. Okay. And in 18, and it says, and many other things in this inner exhortation, he preached unto the people. So at this point, that's when John lets them have it. At this point, I got you in. We're here. We're going to go through and I'm going to tell you about God. Did you follow how John did that process? Because sometimes, again, when we're in a place that's unfamiliar to us, it really kind of gives you the opportunity to what they say, spread your way. Because you, you, you're not operating under judgment. You don't know these people anyway. What are they going to do to you? You can go home and eat, right? Yeah. And sometimes, because I know my home folks are a lot harder to convince, God. if I can convince these people I don't know, imagine what I can do with the people that I do. So as we come to our conclusion and we're preparing the way, 
for people to come in. I just want to challenge everybody to take the advantage, the opportunity to share God with somebody Amen. that you would not ordinarily share God with. We always focus on people that walk in this door. But what about the person standing at the gas station? That's working in the kiosk next to you at work. Person that you meet in the grocery store. Yeah. I don't know how many random people walk up to me and start talking. And I'm like, <laughs> but you know what? I was, I was in the Dollar Tree. And the only thing I did was drop something on the floor. And the man, you know, because he was a good Southern and good Southern white gentleman. But um, he was with his wife. So, you know, when I dropped something on the floor, he had to kind of ask permission. <laughs> Before, I mean, it is what it is. Um, he had to ask permission to make sure it was okay that uh, he can help this black lady. And I said, sir, I'm fine. I said, I'm just trying to finish up something. And then I don't know what I said, but his wife spoke to me. And it gave her, him license to actually have that conversation. Before we finished having that conversation, we were saying, thank you, God, for this day. Don't even know how we got to Jesus, but we got there. But that whole conversation wasn't even for us. Because we were just talking about God. The cashier says, thank God for coming to my home. Because she needed someone who knew who Christ was. Remember in preparing the way, our goal is not to leave people off the ark. Everybody's in life. If you don't offer or extend an invitation, then how do they know that? So today, as we close, and our prayer, and I think I'm on time, almost. Our prayer says, God, as we await Jesus' return, show us how to prepare others to receive your salvation. Help us to be attentive to the workings of your spirit in our wilderness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I thought to remember all together prepare the way for the Lord. All right. Thank you, Pastor. Um, and also, while I'm standing here, I was hoping John was here, but I guess I'm supposed to uh, tell my card to everyone that's here. Um, I just want to thank you all for blessing me on first Sunday. Um, you didn't have to do that. I, you know, I do not take it lightly to tell you thank you. And it is my honor to be here. Today. It is not something that I, I, I have to do. <laughs> this is where the Lord blessed me, but I, I love to be around wonderful people Amen. that know who God is and don't mind telling folks don't mind showing folks you know I, I, I say this often and maybe I don't say it often enough but in this church I've seen people and, and, and I get that it's a small number of people but you know when you're training leaders sometimes you don't need everybody in this room and I've seen a very strong spirit in the most humble way you know because some people are showy they like to stand in front of you and tell everything that they know and everything they do. And that's not really something I've seen. And that is a rare quality. It is very rare. The humility that exists and the, the skill set and the strength that exists in, in, this, in this house, I, I, I thank God for, for him blessing this community to have it. Because every community doesn't have people who will work because God told them not because it's their responsibility or it's something they have to. And I just want to thank you for having that type of spirit in a space where you don't think it is all about you. It's all about spreading the word and the ministry of Christ. So um, again, I guess I had to say it mercy to me now, but I thank you. Kay, I left the uh, packages for the choir and the choir stand. So when you come okay. on Sunday, y'all have a come So when you come Christmas Sunday, It'll be there. I guess you'll get there. It's your Christmas present. Don't forget. Okay. <laughs> and I'll miss some pa the packages for the uh, church. The Christmas gifts will be there. Okay. Y'all have a blessed one. Okay. Thank you. But you know, I, I...
We're grateful to have on day one. She comes in and God knows and she talks about how she drives. Yeah. I'll never forget we we was invited to go to church way out down. Way. Way. Way out there. They were way down in past we way back in country. She beat us there. She was sitting there part there in the church yard waiting on us. That just shows and when I say it, good musicians are hard to find. So if you got one, you better take care of them. Amen. Thank God that she's been here as long as she has been here.
Sunday school teacher. Amen.
Verse 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Verse 15. Verse 16 all together. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. Amen. 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 Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Lord have mercy. I felt like preaching this morning. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we were blessed. Marcus, Melvin's son, and the one that's six days older than my son, who jumped in his mother when Sister Leah came by. The, that's what I'm just talking about, what I'm talking about. Uh, he, they had a child on yesterday. Amen. Amen. I, I, I I asked the question. I asked the question. I asked the baby, do we need to gas up and go to Atlanta right now? I know how Sister Neil is to come to baby. They mean somebody. Nephews, one of the nephews, one of the nephews, one of the nephews, nephew who he's the same age as my son is, who my wife helped raise 
when they both, both was born, she stayed at home several years and raised these two. And this one, Marcus, with his wife, had a baby boy on yesterday. And the child was born. I'll show you to ride up to Atlanta. I know she said she already acquainted it. It's her baby. Back down to Thompson. No more. Got one eight years old. That's enough. Somebody say me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an exciting time to have children. Amen. 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 Are there any? Let's, let's do it this way. Have heard from Sister Jane? Praying all this year. She she doing okay? All the check up on us. Selection Bobby. Those that they can help or those that can 
que eu tenho no mesmo lado. E com o local desprende esse novo, novo, novo Então, é o que eu faço, né? O mundo é o povo, ele foi o povo que foi todo lindo. Estava no meio de palavras, foi o Santos que ele foi, a partir de uma boa, a neve é teacher, really enjoy the message. Nessa temporada do Paulo, o imenso abate. Missionário, Paulo Vale. And this time you may petition those things that you don't have to send it in the need of Christ. Really. Thank you. 
tahu di dalam Father God, let your will be done in earth, just as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from me. For thine is the king and the power as the glory forever. Eternal God, we, your children, come to you with heads bowed. And Lord, we would like to say thank you. Thank you for all you've done. Lord, we thank you for watching over us all night long. Lord, we say thank you. Then right early this morning, you touched us with your love. You gave us the use and the activities of our lives. Lord, we say thank you. When we look throughout the house, we Realize that everybody was doing okay. Lord, we said thank you. You gave us food to eat. You gave us that which we had to drink. And Lord, we said thank you. You allowed us to put our garments upon our body. You gave us family mercy where you allowed us to come to the house of worship just one more time. And Lord, we said thank you. Lord, since we've been here, we read your word and we heard the teacher teach your word. And Lord, we heard the prayers prayed. And now we are here fellowshipping with the saints. And we're, once again, we said thank you. But Lord, we know that all is not well. Trouble and trials all over the land and country. Wars and rules of war. Tornadoes and people are losing their houses and trouble in their houses. Lord, if it's ever been a time that we need you, we need you right now. Somebody needs you to be a doctor in a sick room. Lord, we know you got all the power in the palm of your hand. We know that you're a doctor that never lost the care. Heal right now in the name of Jesus. Looking at the news, whereas uh, they're saying that diseases are being spread. Lord, you got all power in your hand. You said in your word that if we speak to this mountain, that we can tell this mountain to be now removed. This mountain will have to move as far as the east is to the west. Lord, strengthen us where we are weak. Build us up where we are torn down. We ask that you will prop us up on every lady's side. Somebody got weak 
along the way. Been battered and been bruised. Cried late in the midnight hour. But the word is power that we can make endure for a night. But joy coming in the morning. Lord, we know that you will cry every tear from our eyes. Lord, we pray for the names that were called out. We pray for the ones that wanted to be here, but for some reason or another, they was unable to be here. Lord, we pray for our elders. We pray for our children. We pray for this community. Lord, we pray for this country. Bring peace into this world. Have mercy on us right now. Lord, we say thank you for all you have done. We say thank you for what you are doing for us right now. Lord, we ask that you would use us. If you can use anything, you can use me. Let us be a vessel to spread your gospel, to help somebody along the way, to, say, to tell somebody about Jesus. Have mercy on us right now. Lord, we thank you for the finest. We pray that you will bless some 30, some 60, some 100. First down, shake it and run it over. We ask that you open up the windows of hell. Pour us out of this. That we won't have room enough to receive. That we can share and bless somebody else. And all the way, there be a building for your kingdom. Thank you for those that gave. If it was any that did come, we know that you are able to make a way out of no way. For the families that are represented here today, we ask that you bless each and every one. Whatever they said in the news. Lord, we, we say thank you. We worship you. We praise you. We magnify you. We lift you up. Said Jesus. Amen. Thank you. 